How far are we from Ryswick? Well, 30, 35 kilometer. Two or three hours then, yeah? We should stop at Maltwick. No, we will stop when we get to Ryswick. Was ist denn da draußen los? Dieser alte Dampfer läuft nicht schneller, Herr Hauptmann. All of the principal Norwegian cities are now under the protective care of the German army. These include Oslo, Bergen, Trondheim, Stavanger and Narvik. The invasion by British troops is ended. Therefore, there is no need for the mobilization of Norwegian armed forces. Repeat, no mobilization. As we get your charts to the British minefields. Oh, good. You should be able to load your boat and out to Trondheim in two days. That doesn't give us much time. So it's all yours. Good luck. Take over here. I want to go on ahead. Victor, you come with me. Herpe, stand guard. If anybody comes along and doesn't identify himself, shoot. Mother says you can come out now. I don't want to come out. You get out of here. She says you have to. It's something about father going away. We have to say goodbye. I don't want to say goodbye. Oh, why are you all dressed, Peter? Can't you mind your own business? You're the one who got me into all this trouble. If you kept your mouth shut about those biscuits I took, I'd been in Bergen by now. They would have caught you sneaking off the ship. That's what you think. They're all too busy about the war. Give me that key. 
And I said, get out of here. Any young men left in the area will be suspect. So keep out of sight. When your boat is hidden, check in here. As soon as I reach our forces and have a new plan, I'll be back. And if not, I'll get the message to Inge. I'll let her know where I am. Here. You'll need this more than I will. And this. Be careful. The bathrobe is getting loose. Are you going to fight to Uncle Victor? What do you think? dry crackish. Boys belong in school. You'll have time to travel when you grow up. Here. Add this to your collection of junk. Next time you steal a compass, make sure it works before you sneak it back. Make I use one tonight. Okay, okay. I'll pay for it. You will pay. When did you ever earn a penny? Louis, <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> a good girl. A man can't face the enemy empty-handed. Remember, you know nothing. All right, boys, let's line up. Let's go.
Attention, attention. All adult residents of Ryswick are requested to assemble immediately in Nansen Square. New regulations of interest to all citizens will be explained by order of the commanding officer of the protective authority. Attention, attention, all citizens to come to Nansen Square. The captain is sure that you will treat us with courtesy and respect, and we will treat you the same. Any opposition to his authority, however, will be punished severely. Why is he talking instead of the captain? Captain can't talk no reason, dummy. For instance, all firearms are contraband. Naturally, a house check will be made and all weapons confiscated. Anyone caught possessing firearms will automatically be guilty of treason and treated in the usual way. From tonight on, there will be an 8 o'clock curfew. This, of course, is for your own protection. Again, anyone caught outside of his own house will be presumed to be engaged in illicit activities and punished accordingly. Of course, it would grieve the captain very much to have to administer these punishments. It's Peter. Oh. I'm 
so tired. How long have you been skiing? Oh, I don't know. Since Vida. Twelve hours, maybe. Here, put your arm across my shoulder. Let me help you. No. Help me off my pack. I think I can manage. Please hurry. It's so cold. So, more than half of the students went to look for the fighting. And some of them stayed behind to welcome the Nazis. Hmm. Our own people. Victor! Oh! oh. oh. I thought you were in Bergen. What are you doing here? I came yesterday this afternoon, but you went off with the other men, they said. Yeah, I did. But I heard you were coming home, so I came back. Oh, be serious. <laughs> Any news from Lars yet? Nothing. But we know why the Germans are here. They are setting up an anti-aircraft base. Is something wrong? A war, sweetheart. A man's war. And you should stay out of it. It's not only a man's war, Uncle Victor. I want to fight, too. Peter, what are you doing out of bed? Take me on the boat with you. I'm good in the rigging. You said so yourself. Yeah, you'll be a real sailor someday. But now, please be a good boy. Go back to bed. I don't want to be a good boy. I want to kill Nazis. All right, kill Nazis. But in your bed, not down here. Anyway, I'll have to go now. Why is it you all have these knapsacks? Our storms can be very bad. We always carry food and rope in the winter.
Peter, what are you doing down here? Looking for you. What if a German patrol was around when you were yelling? Well, what did you risk my life for? Where did you get this? From the cave. Do you know what it is? Gold, I think. You think? How did you find a cave? What do you know about a gold? Nothing. I just found it there. Just found it? Does anybody else know about this? No, I fixed up my tracks when I left. What got into that head of yours to make you do such a thing? I thought maybe you let me bring it all down for you. A little every day. You see, the Germans search grown ups they don't bother with kids. Then if I helped you, maybe you let me go with you on the boat. Listen, this is the government's gold. If we can get it all to America, it will be worth nine million dollars. And we need those dollars to buy planes and guns and ammunition to get the Germans out. The Germans need a gold too. And if they find it, it will mean disaster, especially to your father, who is responsible for it. I didn't... Besides, need... if you brought it down one ingot every day, it will take you nearly two years to do the job. And we have about a month of snow left at the most. Well, I... I could... You could what? I could get some of the other kids to help me. We could work every day. Yeah, and you would have every quisling family in Ricewick telling your secrets to the Germans. My friends aren't quisling... Nobody knows what their friends are in times like this. Now listen, don't go near the cave. Don't talk about gold or about me, or any of this to anyone. Do you understand? If you do, we'll all be killed. This is no game, Peter. This is war. All right, get on home. Go round by way of the coast road, and don't tell anyone where you have been. All right. We interrupt the regular news service for an official bulletin. Special police are checking all transit points north of Oslo for gold, valued at over 60 million kronor, belonging to the Norwegian Treasury. The bullion was intercepted by criminals, possibly with the aid of foreign agents, while being moved to safety. Failure to report suspicious movements of unidentified strangers is a crime against the state. The weather for tomorrow continues cold with unseasonable low temperatures on the west coast and in oh, southern Norway. Oh, Victor, Victor, you're the catch you. My own father could never catch me in the woods at night. I think I can get away from other protectors. Inge, I want to talk to you. Louisa, isn't it your bedtime? Yes, children. It's almost nine o'clock. Up to bed. But, Mother, we don't have school anymore. Come on, Louisa, I'll take you to bed. I think Victor has secrets to tell. No, but uh, I want you to stay. And Peter, too. Peter? Did he tell you anything about this morning? No. What happened? That's a good sign. Oh, what did he do? Well, as a matter of fact, he has given me an idea. My problem is how to get the gold on board before Lars comes back. I was wishing for trolls. Trolls? Of course, they are invisible. Well... What else is invisible? And what's less likely to interest serious people in wartime than a bunch of children out in the snow? But suppose they were caught? Well, who would suspect we'd trust a child to carry a hundred thousand kroner in the rucksack? The Germans! Victor! Just a minute, I'm coming! Oh, good evening. We're just making a house check. May we come in, please? The open door will just make your house cold. Yes, please. Thank you. Ah, ah may I? Yes, please. Sure. Now, your, uh, your name, please. Mrs. Lars Lundström. Mrs. Lars Lundström. And your husband's business? Fishing boats. Ah, anyone else? No.
Well, I see you've forgotten someone. Benton Nielsen, student, University of Bergen. Oh, a graduate student. Good, good. We have something in common. I notice how well you speak Norwegian. It must come in handy for questioning women and children. Well, are there any weapons in the house? Uh, no. Well, if your husband took that one, we have it now. All the men from Ryswick were taken prisoner this morning. Lars, all of them? Yes, all of them, coming through the pass at Serum. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, but you should be relieved. At least he won't be fighting anymore. What will happen to them? Well, they'll be held until the resistance ends, but... I don't think that should be too long. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure of that. Uh, whose cap? Oh, oh, it's Peter's. The boys. Good night, Mrs. Lostrom. And, uh, Betty Nielsen, student. What should we do? Yes, Inger, I heard. Do you really think they won't hurt him? We're lucky. They obviously don't know what Lars is really doing. No. I think you're right. The entrance to the cave will begin melting soon. Peter's plan is our only chance. Peter? Can you really do this? Yes, Mother. At the first sign of danger, Ringer, I promise we'll stop. Well, if it's no other way. The first time you disobey an order, you go straight home. The Germans may try to be friendly toward us, but what they really want is to find out our secret. So you must swear here and now, never to talk to a German and never to speak to anyone about our work. Get on with your swearing, Peter. Okay. Do you swear never to speak to a German and never to tell anyone about the work we are doing? Amen. 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 Amen.
Well, are you all right? Hmm? I too like to ski. Yes, perhaps someday you'll teach me how to use these Norwegian skis. Hmm? to try Norwegian skis. Like this! <laughs> Come on. Come on, let's go. This it? Yes. But first, Helga, leave your knapsack down here, go up on the top of the hill, and stand guard. The rest of you, come down here. Mr. Snowman, rich Mr. Snowman. Peter, how rich is he? Over a million kroner. What a husband for some poor girl. Let's start back. We have a long trip ahead of us. Hey, Peter, what happens to the gold now? That's none of our business. Let's go.
Louisa, is she hurt? No, just tired. Why are you so late? Trouble? No, it's all these kids. It was easier going down myself. Of course it was. It's always easier doing things yourself. But you can't carry 560 bars in one knapsack. 560? We only brought down 14 today. You know, my father, he used to like going mountain climbing when he came ashore. And one day I said to him, I must take a big, strong man to climb so high. No, he said. A high mountain is just a line of small hills attached to one another. And to get to the top, you've just got to climb the hill in front. So you don't have to be big and strong, but you have to keep going on and on and on. I know. Did you see Victor? No, he wasn't there. No, no, finish with the young lady first. I only want cigarettes. Wrong, wrong pins. News bulletin, Bergen command post. The police are now sure of enemy involvement in the theft of the government gold. German SS units have joined the cordon closing in on the west coast area where the gold is believed to be hidden. Refusal to cooperate with the search parties will be considered as an act of treason. That'll be all. Please put them all on the Lundstrom's bill. Allow me, please. Well, at least let me bring in the groceries. Will you please go now? Yes, soon. Look, if you're trying to embarrass me, you, you, you've gone far enough. Oh, you don't like Germans? I'd hate anyone in that uniform you're wearing. Well, do you ever think of the man in the uniform? How can you call yourself a man? Making believe you're defending us. Like you defended Czechoslovakia and Poland. Well, a soldier does what he's told. If you were a soldier, would you disobey your commander? If I were ordered to molest unarmed women in their homes, I would look for a commander that wasn't a thug. 
Repent? What are you saying? Hi, Hitler. Can't you stay with the rest of us? You kids are too slow. What do you think this is? A race? Do you want the Germans to catch the fast ones or the slow ones? Look like it's your gold. I didn't say that. But I'm in charge of getting it down to the snake. And if you don't like what I say, you can quit right now. All right. How is you a big shop? Do you have a sister? Hey! Do you want a chocolate? Talk to us. Talk. Dumb fish. Knabel, du! Ja, that's right, you. Fragen Sie ihn, wie so ein so großer Junge hat nichts anderes als Skila für ihm Kopf. The captain wants to know why such a big boy like you is skiing all day. Ich könnte ihn gut aus Burschen gebrauchen. As he says, he could use a boy like you to be his orderly, shine his boots, learn to be a soldier instead of an ignorant fisherman. How would you like that, hmm? Come and live at the barracks, wear a uniform. Well, what's the matter with you, boy? Has your mouth frozen shut? What do you say? Ich will was benehmen noch beibringen. The captain promises you he will teach you some manners. Captain von Brock has deliberately chosen to meet with you here, rather than in his office, because you see, he's been, he's been good enough to accept my idea to use you, use your education. Now, he asked me to inform you that we are reopening the school, and since the schoolmaster is, shall we say, not at liberty, we are in need of your help. Now, I will be in charge, of course, but you will be the teacher, since Norwegian is not my native tongue. Yes, I... <clears throat> well, I have no degree. I... Well, that's all right. Even a high school graduate can teach elementary class. But the school is occupied with your troops. Yes, we've made arrangements to use this church here. No. It's impossible. I... I just can't. Warum stehst du nicht auf? 
I, I think it would be better if you stood when you spoke to the captain. Erinnern Sie das, Fräulein, dass in vielen Ländern Frauen nicht nach ihrer Wahl gefragt werden, Herr Leutnant. The captain asked me to inform you that in most countries we don't offer women a choice of profession. Don't worry, please. There's nothing to fear. It's all part of an idea I have. You'll be teaching reading, writing, arithmetic, and so on. I'll be in charge of political science. I think that's all. I'll be detained. Now, I know that some of you are very unhappy your vacation's ended, but the authorities have ordered us to open the school, and we must do the best we can. Where's our regular teacher? No one knows. Mr. Benson left with the other men. We want Mr. Benson. Yes, I, I too wish he were here. Mr. Benson! Mr. Benson! Mr. Benson! We want Mr. Benson! Mr. Benson is fighting Nazis, not helping them. We will begin with fractions, just to brush up. Helga Olson, please would you come up here and do this problem? Don't do it. Don't help her, she's for them. Go and sit down, please. They were impossible, like little animals. Even our own family, even Louisa. They are angry. They've been stopped in the middle of their work. But why me? Why pick on me? Don't they understand? I don't want to understand. I want to go back to the slopes. <laughs> and that man. Round my neck every minute. It's a miracle he didn't see them. My son teeter down to me after school tomorrow. I'll talk to him. And he should know better. He's risking everything. You were clever to pick this place. I had to see you. I didn't know what to do. You will have to keep the school going. Just to keep the Germans from suspecting us. There must be other ways. Well, it's getting late now. You better get back. I don't want to leave you. It's worse here than when I was in Bergen, because here you're, you're so near. Come, I go a little way with you.
Tito gives the signal. Maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> Don't do anything if you're scared. All right, places, everyone. I want your attention now, please. We'll try spelling drill. Michael, on your feet and spell economy. E C O N O M Y. you think you're doing, huh? You? What? Well, are you proud of yourselves? Is this the way the children of Norway treat their teachers? How you show your respect? How you act in times of trouble? What are you, gangsters? Now listen to me, all of you. Acting like hooligans can only get you into trouble, very serious trouble. And you. If you are the leader of this group, you had best learn how to lead. If you don't respect authority, you have no authority yourself. And you can't lead a bunch of wild animals except into a trap. I've been watching you. You have brains. Use them. From now on, I hold you responsible. I go home, think about it, and come back tomorrow morning like human beings who have the capacity to learn something. Hmm? That's all. Well, after this, you should have less trouble with them. You can do something for me, something important. What? But first, I want you to accept me as your friend. I'm not a Nazi. I'm not even German. Neither is Hitler. In an army of hundreds of thousands of people, not everyone is a fanatic Nazi. Like some others, I don't believe in Hitler. What do you want from me? First, I want you to trust me. Why? Do you? Why? Because I'd like you to put me in touch with the man you met with last night. He must be in the underground or he wouldn't be here. So you can arrest him? Why didn't you shoot us when you had the chance? No, but doesn't that prove to you that I'm telling the truth? It's because I need your help. Why am I listening to you? It's all part of a trap. No, no, you don't understand. Believe me, I'm trying to escape. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! From the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean, there are 3,000 long miles across rivers, plains, and mountains. But down here in Panama, only 50 miles separate the two same oceans. Now, many troubles beset the French company that was digging the canal, but the worst was a sickness called yellow fever. Work stopped. The company failed, and later an American company took over. 
The Americans began the job you by have bringing brains. many engineers Use and many great machines. The most important people they brought were doctors. Yes, Bida. What can I do for you? You don't look very sick. I was wondering if we could have an epidemic of yellow fever. Yellow fever? In Norway? Absolutely not. Isn't there some other sickness that will close the school? Well... Please, Dr. Ocker. You must believe me. It's important for Norway that we close the school. Let me think about it. Diphtheria? Smallpox? Meningitis? Measles? Ten years of medicine. And this is the first time I deliberately make a child sick. brought it down one ingot every day it will take you nearly two years to do the job and we have about a month of snow left at the most come on everybody let's go must we go already i said let's go don't you know how to respect authority are you gangsters or wild animals can't you take orders on the trails. Two hours of rain could wash it all away. Then we're finished. Mm. That would be a big hill. But wait till you get to it. Snow is rotten. Let's try the road over Borgens Hill. Get off 
the road. Wait a minute, I'll go with you. I will show you how we ski in Tyrol. Here, take me. Zurich zur Arbeit. Support! Come. Yeah, you must eat a heavy lunch. Hmm? I think I saw someone. Where? Over there. Benji. What is it? Yoga and I saw a man watching us up the snake. Was it a German? We couldn't tell. He was too far away. Didn't you tell Victor? I thought about it, but then I thought, I suppose somebody was watching us. Just waiting to follow me to the boat. You're right. Perhaps it was a trap. Maybe Pierre Goshen can go tonight. He isn't here. The man with the charts came tonight. Pierre went to meet him. I'll go with myself. After it gets dark. <laughs> Well, where are 
are you going so late? Another secret rendezvous? You know, many times I used to let myself think of what it would be like meeting alone with you in the moonlight. No war. No uniform. Well, no matter. You see, once again, I'm in need of your help. This time I do not ask. You see, I find myself overdue at my quarters. I need an excuse. You will be my excuse. No, I won't go. I think you will. I know everything now. And whether or not I do anything about it depends entirely on you. What are you waiting for? Well, I told you. To meet your boyfriend. <laughs> Understand me, Benty. I've made my plans. I will not let anyone or anything get in my way. Before, I tried to accomplish these things by being friendly with you. But since you find that so distasteful, no more. Now you will do exactly as I say. Tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, you'll meet me outside of your house and you will lead me to your friend. And remember, one word about this to anyone. And it's all over for you, the skiing children, your boyfriend, everything. So don't go anywhere tonight, hmm? I know the curfew hasn't meant much to you in the past, but tonight, tonight has it better. Kids must go down tomorrow. Michael is coming by in the morning. Michael and you can come with me to look for Victor. But no gold. I sure hate the sound of that water. Shh, listen. I think I can hear someone coming. You ski over to the clearing. He's dead. No, just knocked out. What are we going to do now? We can take him to old Johnson Smithy. There's no one there now. Thank <laughs> you. 
still sleeping. Well, maybe. But I'm going to stand guard. You better take a nap. Maybe hours before she finds Victor. Good idea. You wake me up later. day. <laughs> I told you once I like to ski, but uh, <laughs> seems I'm not too good at it. They're very careless with guns, you know. They're dangerous. Ah, don't let it worry you. I wanted you to capture me. Why? Well, because I think you'll take me where I want to go. What's that? There's someone who will help me to escape. Are we supposed to believe that? You think just because we kids... Oh, you... wait, wait, wait a minute now. You're not so young and innocent as all that. I've been watching you for over a week. I know exactly what you've been doing. You do? Mm-hmm. Yes, all about the gold in the cave and you're moving it. I must admit, I don't know where it is now, but... Well, you see, I'm being very honest with you. This is a trap, Peter. Yes, if it is, well, then I'm in it. Because it was you who caught me. I'll bet there are Germans outside waiting to capture Vic. Well, I hope not. Because if there are, I'm a dead man. Right, Peter? All right. Kalish, Andre, Lieutenant Second Class Field Intelligence. I am unarmed. I wish to surrender. What's your game? I'm not a soldier. You know you can't surrender to me. What do you want with these children? Well, ask them. They brought me here. Stop playing or I'll blow your brains out. All right. I'll let them capture me. I want you to help me to escape. It's true, Uncle Victor. He could have taken his gun back, but he didn't. Quiet, Peter. I put myself entirely in your hands. I want to defect. Why? I don't like the Nazis. Why? Why? Do you have to ask? Your reasons. They are personal. Well, you better make them public. You've got about five seconds. I'm not German. I'm Slovak. Well? The Germans overran my country. They... What about that uniform you're wearing? I was born in the Sudeten. They considered me German. They took me into the army. If I wasn't in the army, I'd be at forced labor or a concentration camp. I was against them. They would have found out sooner or later. This way, I had a chance to move around. Yeah, with a gun on your hip? I gave myself up. What more do you want? I want to know why. There are reasons. Yes? I was a language student at the university. Well, they took me in the Signal Corps. I was an announcer on the Prague radio. And on a certain night, I had to announce over the radio the dynamiting of an apartment building in which a famous editor was hiding in the cellar. The girl I was to marry lived in that house. I found her body in the rubble. You don't know the Nazis here. Not yet. They've been told to behave because they want you to help them against the Allies. But once they get the upper hand, they're like madmen. They believe only in force. They understand only force. When will you be missed? I was supposed to be on duty at 8 o'clock. Well, it's after that now. Let's get out of here. Perry, you better take the boys back to town. If 
Peter. So, I could not be seen talking to a man, but to a girl. And I had to make sure it was someone who was anti-Nazi. Does anybody else know where you were last night? Only a guard knows I was even out, but he wouldn't question the movements of an officer. How long have you known about it, Judah? About a week. I don't know. I believe him. All right, get into the forward bank. Don't you move. If they take one step aboard this boat, you will be the first to go. Du bist her. Nicht hier. Der ist nicht hier. Alle zurück. Done that much, German. Was it close one? Too close. Take him into the hole. With the cargo? Kids have only one more load. I think I'll take a chance. I really don't know. Maybe he wants to escape, as he says. I don't like it. What will you do? Take him with me. It's safer for us. Long live the king! Long <laughs> we are searching for a German officer. Has anybody seen him? Why don't you answer? Hey, you! Come here! Come, come, come! Have you seen a man? Here! Answer me! Have you got no manners? There are flucht der Saubander! You'll be punished for this!
What could I do to him? They're barbarians. Besides, he knows too much. But a child, 13 years old? Oh, what do they care? They'll torture him until he talks. But they don't know what he knows. They'll make sure to find out what he knows. I know. I swore to Ingra I won't let anything happen to the kids. I couldn't face loss. It's just that the last of it is out there in the clearing. I could sail on the morning tide. They must have him in the town hall. I know every inch of that building. I'll go and get him. You wouldn't get three feet before you're caught. That place is surrounded by guards. Besides, you don't speak German. Straight out about a hundred yards. 
things they get their shots. Go! Wait very long. The tide won't wait. Uncle Victor! Peter, the gold is moving, and we go to England. You did. They are not always so small. What are you talking about? About climbing mountains and the line of small hills. Mm -hmm. 